I'm with R. Michael Jones. He is president and CEO of Platinum Group Metals. Michael, welcome to Kitco. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I wanted to get into PGMs and how they could have a role in producing certain types of lithium-ion batteries. Uh, but let's first talk about your company. You're advancing a project at Waterberg. Can you give us an update on the status of the project? Uh, so it's, a, it's a very large deposit. Uh, it's 19 and a half million ounces of reserves. Um, which is pretty rare to find a company with 19 and a half million ounces of proven and probable reserves. Um, that's in palladium dominantly, it's in South Africa, and we completed a definitive feasibility study. And at the end of 2019, we had all the joint venture the partners approve that feasibility study in the declaration of reserves. Can you uh, take us through the mix of metals? I believe it's a palladium rich project. Yeah, it's very unusual for South Africa, um, as many people would know. 70% of the world's platinum production comes from South Africa, but in this case, the deposit is 63% palladium, 29% platinum, um, and some gold, and sadly, only 2% rhodium. Wish we had more rhodium at uh, $5,000 an ounce or so. Um, but it is palladium dominant, which is much more valuable than platinum, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us uh, what is going to be the cost to build? Uh, what would be a potential timeline? Yeah, so the definitive feasibility study set out a three year build timeline and the peak funding or the bottom of the cash flow curve um, is $614 million. So um, that's pretty modest against the scale of the project really, which could produce a 420,000 ounce a year production profile. Um, we always joke about uh, giving apologies for the short mine life of 45 years. Um, you know, many operations in South Africa go for 100 years, but with our resources, uh, the mine could go that long. Uh, obviously, uh, South Africa was really hit by the COVID-19 and had some uh, really uh, strict um, uh, work rules that were introduced uh, after that hit. Can you bring us up to date uh, with uh, what is happening with your company and with uh, COVID-19? Yeah, so we've, um, we've been able to work really right through. A lot of the work right now in the implementation budget is, is desktop engineering and preparations for construction. So we haven't lost anything on our critical path timeline. We'd set in the feasibility study, a start of our decline ramps into the deposit um, at the beginning of January, 2021. So this period here was actually set for risk analysis, optimization, and getting ready for implementation, operational readiness. So we're doing that work actually right now. Um, it's been quite interesting in South Africa that the government has, uh, as you said, imposed quite stiff uh, lockdown provisions initially, which are slowly relaxing. But it's been a, a time when the mining industry and the government have really come together to work through this crisis. And um, looking at our partners' uh, comments in Pala about the government lockdown, and a lot of encouragement about the positive affirmative steps the government's taken and how closely they've worked with industry to look at bringing the economy back. Let's uh, switch to the metal markets themselves. Can you uh, thumbnail what uh, is happening with Platinum Group Metals? Uh, obviously, everything got pulled down in March. Uh, there's also the concern about the softness in the automotive sector. <clears throat> yeah, that's also been fascinating to watch. So, you know, COVID has hit everything from demand for metals, obviously, but also the production side. So we saw uh, when lockdowns came on, uh, you know, car sales went to almost zero. Uh, we saw a very dramatic downdraft in car sales, and uh, we were quite surprised at how quickly that backed into the PGM market. So the demand for catalytic converters uh, also kind of stopped on a dive. At the same time, South Africa, which produces um, the second most amount of palladium in the world, second only to Norilsk and Russia, also stopped on a dime. So the forecasts are that palladium supply will come down by 20%, at the same time as autos have dropped off. The interesting thing is looking at China where the lockdown has come off first, there was a very drastic rebound in car sales. And we're looking to see how those numbers roll out in Europe and the United States, obviously. But in China, amazingly, the car sales in April 2020 were more than April 2019. So we actually saw the numbers rebound. And you really have to wonder if the move away from public transport is going to hit in such a way that we might see kind of a renewed love affair with the car from the 1950s, where people actually really like to go from A to B in their car. And we'll see how this plays out in the months ahead. But certainly the signs are that the car market is very, very quick to rebound. 
uh, keeping with the car theme. Uh, you have another company. Uh, this is investigating uh, Platinum Group Metals, and there's a possible tie-in uh, with lithium ion. Uh, there may be uh, some utility by using these metals with the next generation of electric vehicles. Yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating joint venture we formed with uh, Anglo-American. Um, they're the largest producer of PGMs in the world. And if you think about it strategically, palladium in particular is about 84% used in catalytic converters. So if you're gonna move away from the internal combustion engine, that's strategically very bad for the demand for palladium. However, when you think about a battery, just philosophically for a second, it's a chemical reaction in a box. So what do PGMs do that make them so special? They're a catalyst for a chemical reaction. And we all know that these batteries in cars are pretty challenged, really. I mean, if we're looking at, for example, the Tesla Model 3 battery, I mean, that thing weighs 371 kilograms. Um, it's really not very practical to drag around in your car every day, and everybody's got range anxiety and how much charge can you carry in this battery. So a more efficient battery is super desirable. Why wouldn't PGMs actually play a role to encourage that reaction, both on the discharge and the recharge? And it turns out, in fact, they can play that role. So we found research two years ago at Florida International University that was doing exactly that, putting platinum and palladium into a lithium battery. And most battery scientists would acknowledge that the next generation is either lithium air or lithium sulfur, which are very light. And so that power to weight ratio advantage is huge. And that's what we're working on. So we've filed several patents now. Um, we're getting to a more advanced stage and it looks really promising against making that leap to the next generation of battery chemistry. So Anglo uh, being a large producer of PGMs recognized this right away. And we own 52% of the private company and Anglo-American owns 48%. We hear that there might uh, be a space for fuel cell electric vehicles in the next generation of cars. Uh, can you talk about the latest research that uh, we're seeing for uh, penetration? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, advantages and a lot of challenges there. So on the advantages side, uh, fuel cells obviously can carry a significant amount of energy. Hydrogen has uh, three times the amount of energy per kilogram of gasoline. So it's very energy dense, which is great. The challenge is distributing hydrogen is very hard. Um, you have to keep it at high pressure. It wants to escape from everything. Um, and, and so there's no distribution network for hydrogen. Where we see the earliest adoption really is in things like heavy duty trucks, uh, fleets of delivery vehicles, perhaps in trains where you have a centralized hub for fueling and long distances with large amounts of energy consumption. So in China, there's a lot of advancement being made in truck fleets in fuel cells, and that's probably where it'll go first. But for the passenger car with broad distribution and varied traffic, it's probably gonna be batteries before we get to that fuel cell leap. Our Michael Jones. Thank you very much for speaking with Kitco. My pleasure.